Hey, I'm Tantan, nice to meet you. I'm making a voxel game with the Rust programming language and the Perfect Game Engine. Now, I am currently remaking the entirety of the world generation. That includes how the landscape is shaped, the visual aesthetic. Should I use coloring or should I use textures? When I'm done with this, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. But the most exciting feature might just be procedural voxel trees. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's dive in. I found two popular algorithms for generating trees, L-System and SPACE COLONIZATION! Space colonization has the coolest name so we're gonna use that. This is how it works. First we pick a position where the tree will start growing from, then we add a shape that we want the tree to grow into. Stepping through the algorithm we can see branches slowly taking over this space. We can also do some post-processing on the data like simulating gravity or spinning the branches, making it possible to mimic a variety of trees. I built this algorithm first in two dimensions following a coding train video, highly recommend. I then converted everything to three dimensions. The algorithm is exactly the same, I just had to use VEC3s instead of VEC2s. The way this algorithm works is that inside the shape we want the tree to grow into, we actually spawn a bunch of small particles, I'll call them attractors. We have attractors, branches and a start position. A branch is actually just a line, it has a start position and an end position. Let's say we have generated this tree so far. First we find all the attractors within a certain range. We draw a line towards all of these attractors, we add these directions together, normalize the vector, then it is as simple as spawning a new branch position in this direction. The last step is to eliminate the attractors within a certain range. It's kinda like a snake eating up all the apples along the way. The growing doesn't just happen from the last branch we made, the algorithm is ran for every single branch end position, which is how we get multiple branches. What is cool is that we can spawn attractors anywhere we want, and the tree will grow to occupy that space. There are plenty of parameters we can play with, how many particles we spawn, how far the branches grow over iteration, etc. If you like the Rust programming language as much as I do, you might be interested in my sponsor, Quadratic. Quadratic are building an open source spreadsheet for engineers and data scientists. Built in Rust, WebAssembly and WebGL. If you thought spreadsheets couldn't get any better, well take a look on this. You can pick what formula language to use, Python, JavaScript, SQL or the standard Excel-like formulas. Because the data crunching is executed in WebAssembly and the UI is built with WebGL, it is blazingly fast. Scroll around with 60 FPS, smooth pinch to zoom in all modern browsers. I'm excited to say Quadratic is hiring. They are looking for Rust developers to develop the core technologies powering their software, people with WebGL experience to develop their user interface, and people with experience developing React or Express applications for developing Quadratic's cloud functionality. If you are interested in working with new technologies that can transform a massive industry, Quadratic is the place for you. Start their open source GitHub page, check out their job openings at careers.quadratic.to. Thank you Quadratic for supporting this channel. The next step I took was figuring out how to turn these 3D lines into a voxel model. This is how I did it. Imagine we are making 2D voxels in a grid. Given any grid position, we need to figure out the distance to the closest branch. In this example, this position is 10 units away, which is pretty far away we can see, so this should be an air voxel. This position however is almost right on top of the line, it is one unit away, so this should probably be a filled voxel. What we need is a function to get the distance from my position to align with the start and an end position. Here's the function for that, max. So I iterate all the positions in a grid, get the distance to the closest branch and then I set the voxel type based on the distance. Now for every grid position I'm testing, we actually have to iterate all of the branches so I get the closest distance to any of all of these branches. That is a lot of calculations. That's how we turn lines into voxels. But what about leaves? One method that worked well was to spawn big spheres on the branches without a child. Instead of testing the distance to a line, we are checking distance to the sphere. Another method I tried was making the root branch bark and the rest classified as leaf. I'm sure there are other methods, but these are the ones I've tried so far. I can imagine having like a windy area of the world map where all the trees lean in a certain direction. That could be a post-processing step, just like twisting or a Playing gravity. Oh, the possibilities. The story doesn't end here though. I had to integrate this into my voxel engine. A common problem with voxel engines are dealing with chunk edges. Imagine we place down a tree right at the edge of a chunk. The tree is bigger than one voxel, so of course it's going to cross into other chunk areas. And since we are dealing with a multi-threaded environment, we can only modify the data in the chunk we are currently working with. So what happens in this case? Well, the tree gets cut in half. 
the method I decided to use to solve this problem is to save all of the voxel modifications I wanted to do but didn't have access to. I save those voxels and then in a later step when no thread is accessing these chunks I can finally apply these modifications. My implementation isn't perfect. Sometimes a chunk mesh starts building, it sends the mesh to the GPU and the moment it's done a tree modification might be applied to this chunk so the mesh needs to be rebuilt right away. We built this mesh two times and this can be a very slow operation. Multithreading can be really tricky, I'm sure I will revisit this later. Here's a visualization I made where I never apply the voxel modifications and when I tap a button, all of them will apply. So, it, that's fun, I guess. I made the source code for my voxel tree generation public on my GitHub page. It shall be named Shrubbery after Monty Python. Me. That's all I have to say about trees for now. Some other updates. I have worked on my multiplayer implementation. I'm not ready to dive into the code part of all of this, but I can give you a quick overview. As I've said in a previous video, I'm building my own relay solution. A relay is a way to connect players in a peer-to-peer -peer like fashion without leaking players IP addresses. Games like Crab Game uses this technique and that's what I'm building from scratch. You can check out a video on that on my second channel if you want to learn how I'm building that. I've implemented in my game so that you can finally hold the game and join other people's games. I've had to learn how to implement UI in Bevy to do this and Bevy uses a flexbox system, something I've never used in my life. It took me about a week to get UI up and running and interacting with my game. I didn't think I would have to learn some web development things but here we go. Speaking of networking, the player, the enemy, projectiles and health are all synced over the network. It is not perfect but it's a good start and I will talk about the implementation once it has solidified a bit. It's still barely on in its implementation. Coming up, as I said, I'm working on improving the world generation. I want to feel immersed into the world. I want to just run around and be excited to see what's on the other side of that hill. That's the feeling I want to get playing this game. I'm currently messing around a lot with the shape of the world. I want to see some nice cliff overhangs and interesting shapes. As you've seen, I've also removed the texturing to see what it looks like with just colors. I'm trying everything at the moment. I'm also gonna design a variety of procedurally generated tree styles. So, in my next dev Vlog, it's going to look absolutely fabulous. Leave a like, subscribe, and go get some work done, okay?